The long-planned Turkish military operation in northeast Syria has been launched. Turkey pushing ever deeper into Syria. At least 160,000 civilians are believed to have fled the fighting in the border area. Over the next several days, Idlib is the last region still controlled by the jihadists. This plume of smoke is rising from a town in Syria. Assyrian Art and Architecture The ancient region of Mesopotamia is often called the Cradle of Civilization. It is often referred to as the Cradle of Civilization because it is the first place where complex urban centers grew. It is here that we see the earliest form of writing developed along with beautiful art and architecture. Mesopotamia was an area that once covered modern-day Iraq and parts of Syria, Turkey, and Iran. Within the region, there were several cultures that competed for land and resources. The Assyrians During the first half of the millennium, the Assyrian Empire held control over most of the region. The Assyrians were a culture of warriors who were very aggressive. The empire was mostly held under military control. The Assyrians approached their enemies with fierceness and showed no mercy in defeating them. The empire existed between roughly 1365 BC and 600 BC. Assyrian Palace Due to the expansive size of their empire, the Assyrians gained access to many resources including stone and iron. The popularity of iron tools led to the creation of massive palace. Although the availability of stone was ample, Assyrians chose to use mud brick to build many of their palaces in order to emulate the Sumerians. The Sumerians were a largely successful empire that preceded the Assyrians in controlling large part of Mesopotamia. Many other groups mimic Sumerian art and architecture to imply their success by comparison. Carvings One of the unique characteristics of Assyrian art is their relief carvings. They created elaborate relief carvings in stone which exhibited very extensive detail. The carvings often held even Images of battles and major events of war. These carvings also held depictions of the violent result of battle. This may even be the earliest form of narrative art, or art that tells a story. Lamaso is a sculpture from the Syrians who controlled ancient Nereans from about 1000s before Common Era to around 500 before Common Era, and this sculpture in particular came from the palace of Sargon II. The most important sculpture that survived are the guardian figures that protected the city's gates. Each of these various gates, there were guardians that are winged bulls with the heads of men. Lamaso is an enormous sculpture and its length measures in about 13 feet and 9 inches. They would have stood between huge arches. That is, there are no cuts here. This one single piece of stone, and in the ancient world, it was no small task to get these stores in place. So apparently, there were relief carvings in the palace that depicted moving this massive lamaso into place. So it's important to remember that the lamaso were the gateway figures, but the walls of the palace were decorated with relief sculpture showing hunting scenes and other scenes indicating royal power. Lamasu's crown is decorated with flower-like figure and then double horns that come around towards the top center. On the top of that is a ring of feathers. The face, just on the top of the forehead, you could see a wavy hair that comes below the crown. Then it has connected eyebrows. The ears are the ears of a bull that has decorative earrings. Then there's a marvelous, complex representation of the beard. You see a little ringlets on the cheeks of the face. The wings form a decorative pattern on the side of the animal and across its back. In fact, across its body has ringlets itself, so we could get a sense of the fur of the creature. Pictures the innocent, Lamaso appears to have two legs when you look at it from the front, but from the side appears a five-legged creature powerful and dominant.
The Balawat Gates The Balawat Gates are three sets of decorated bronze bands that had adorned the main doors of several buildings at Balawat, dating to the reigns of Azur Nasar Paltu, 883 to 859 BC, and Salmanazar III, 859 to 824 BC. Two sets were commissioned during the reign of Azur Nasar Paltu, and one additional set under the reign of his son, Salmanazar III. Assyrian inscriptions suggest that gates were made of cedar. Experts estimate that the gates stood over 22 feet high. The metal bands that adorn the gates suggest that they measured 285 feet wide. The remains of two sets of Balawat gates can be found in the British Museum's collection. Those from the Temple of Mamo are housed in the Mosul Museum. Small sections of the Salmanazar bronze door bands are also, in, are also at the Walters Art Museum in Baltimore and the Stanbul Archaeology Museum. And here are the images of Balawat Gates. The first photo is the full replica in the British Museum, full replica of Balawat Gates. It was made of a bronze and wood, created in 860 BCE and discovered in 1878. Okay, that's the image of Balawat Gates. The woman in photograph provides an idea of the scale of the gates. Next is the Assyrian lion weights, dating 800 to 700 BCE, are a group of solid bronze weight that, that range from 2 centimeters, approximately 0 0.8 inches, to 30 centimeters, approximately 12 inches, with bilingual inscriptions in both uni uniform and Phoenician characters. The lion weights were discovered as Nimrud in the late 1840s and are now in the British Museum. Material used in this artifact is bronze, writing in Phoenician language and cuneiform. It was created in 800 to 700 BC 